Hello, I'm Jerome Thompson. It's my privilege today to be able to speak to you about the second step in the global membership approach, and that is build a vision. We've already talked about building a team of a core team, those eight or 10 individuals, those lions in your district that you know that will walk alongside you each and every moment of your year as the district governor. And now it's time for us to begin to identify the visionaries, those that are in all of our clubs throughout the district coming together to help us to build a vision for a better district and a better tomorrow as we expand our footprint of service into new communities, as we impact the lives of others and put smiles on their faces, as we engage our members in new and exciting service, and as we provide leadership opportunities, as well as leadership training. And so in the next few minutes, we're gonna talk about your Build a Vision meeting. This is where the excitement begins. Prior to the meeting, there's some prep work that needs to be done. And one of those is that we need to take and invite everyone in the district to participate. Everyone who has an email should get an email that's personalized and that says, Lion Joe, Lion Jane, thank you for all you've done for your club. And because of your creativity and your passion for our great association, I would like to invite you to participate as a visionary in our meeting on February 1st. Our meeting will be held at the Lions Club building. The address is, and give them all the details. At this meeting, you will participate with other Lions across the district in developing a vision for a better district where we want to be in three to five years. We need your help. And we hope that you will take three to four hours on February the 1st to help us. And then if you'd like, you can RSVP and know how many are coming. The other thing that you need to know is you have decided the date and the time of your meeting. You've decided the uh, whether or not there's going to be snacks or meals that are served during that meeting. And now it's time to set the room. And we're going to set the room for 35 to 40. If we invite eight to 900 people, we'll have 35 to 40 visionaries that will show up to help us to build this vision. And our room should be set with, with tables so that each table has about five to six chairs around it because we're gonna have some table work and then we're going to report out the results of the table discussion so that everybody can learn and we can begin to collaborate. And this vision will begin to come together throughout this meeting. We're gonna to go to our Lion account, we're gonna sign in. We're going to go to my LCI and there on the right hand corner, we're going to click membership reports and we're going to find the five year trends for our district. And we're going to print those out and we're going to have a printout of all of those for everyone who comes. So go ahead and run off 35 to 40 copies because you're going to need them because we need to know where we've come from, where we are now, in order to know how quickly we can get to where we'd like to be. And so there's a lot of prep work but we're going to, to make sure that we've invested the time and energy so that this meeting is most productive. And finally, we need to talk about who is gonna be our facilitator, which lion in our district, which lion in a neighboring district or our area leader is best equipped to facilitate this meeting. Someone who can ask questions, someone who can stay excited, someone that can keep the, the uh, lions engaged and we will need a, a few resources a flip chart, some butcher paper. And because every idea is important and every idea is going to be recorded. And as we fill up those uh, flip charts, we're gonna be taping them to the wall so people can understand that everything that's being said today is very serious. And we'll need some markers. Probably on the tables, we may need a few uh, notepads and maybe a few ink pens. And of course, some chocolate and have some water or soft drinks at a minimum, and then we are ready to go. And so in the next few minutes, we're gonna talk about building a vision. And after we've built that vision, we're gonna develop some district goals. And notice those are not district governor goals, those are district goals. The visionaries are gonna help us set the goals because when they are engaged in the process, they're also gonna be engaged in the planning and developing a plan of action. They're gonna be participating 
in building success. And we're not going to be marching alone, but we're going to be marching with a mighty force that's going to change our district. And then toward the end, we're going to talk about the next steps. What do we do once we've had this build a vision meeting? Because the process has only begun. We've also got then two more steps, build a plan and build success. And those will be covered in different videos. Uh, let us move forward here and let's talk about this build a vision. You know, our global membership approach process has the four steps, build a team, build a vision, build a plan, build success. And today we're gonna to focus on building a vision. And as we begin to build a vision, you've got these 35 to 40 visionaries who have gathered in the room. They've all gathered their, sat around their seat and you've helped them to make sure that clubs are split up and that uh, friends and people who think alike or like are split up because we need diversity at each table. Because as we begin, this PowerPoint is at lionsclubs.org slash global, and you can download it. As we begin, the first topic for discussion is expectations. What do Lions and club officers expect from their district governor team? Let every table have three to five minutes to jot down their list. And then whoever's facilitating will have designated a Scrivener to write down all of the ideas. Typically that would be your district governor elect unless they're facilitating. If they're facilitating, it may be your ca uh, cabinet secretary treasurer. It may be your immediate past district governor. <clears throat> and so the question has been answered and all of the, the answers have been given by the tables. And why is this question so important? Because as a district governor, as you go out and you begin to talk with your clubs, if you know what the expectation of your visionaries are, you can meet and exceed that expectation. And you're gonna hear things like, we expect our district governor to come roll up their sleeves and help us in a service project rather than give a lecture. We'd like for our district governor to be inspiring and excited and when they come and speak to us, we'd like to hear more from our district governors. And as these ideas are coming together, some of them are gonna be a little vague. We'd like for our district governor to communicate better. And so the facilitator has some follow-up questions and we begin this discussion, this dialogue. Who should the district governor be communicating with? How often do you think that they should be communicating with these people, the, these positions? Do they only be talking to zone chairs or should they also be talking to some club officers or should they be sending their message to every lion in our district? Whatever the visionaries say is correct because they're setting the bar that, this, that you as a district governor elect will meet and exceed. And then we're gonna right, move right on to what the lions and club officers expect from their zone chairperson. And this is so important because most of the time in the meetings that I've facilitated, one or more Lions says, what's a zone chair? I've not seen a zone chair at our club in years. And when that happens, it's a teachable moment because not only are you gonna explain what a zone chair should do, you are going to be setting those expectations for zone chairs that you're about to appoint because those zone chairs are gonna be some of your visionaries that are in the room. And so ultimately, a zone chair is a mini district governor for four to five clubs in their zone. And what have you expected the district governor you should be expecting of the zone chair? And then most important, what do we expect of Lions Clubs? And let them discuss it at the table. Let them give you their answers because when you go as a district governor, a vice district governor to speak, no longer are you lecturing to clubs but now you're just sharing a message from all the visionaries. You know, when the visionaries met on February the 1st, I asked them, what do we expect of Lions Club? What does an excellent Lions Club do? And they told us an excellent Lions Club is adding four to six members per year. An excellent Lions Club is reporting their service monthly. That an excellent Lions Club is paying their dues within uh, 30 days. An excellent Lions Club is engaged in their community and has a, a social media presence. Whatever they tell you, that's what it says. And you just report that out. And then simply, it's up to you as a club to evaluate whether or not you've met the expectation of the visionaries that come together. And if you believe that an excellent club should be defined differently, 
you come and join us at our next Build a Vision meeting and you help us to refine this definition. And you just are very positive, you're upbeat, clubs are evaluating themselves and you're telling them the club said that I needed to do X, Y, Z and this is what I'm doing in order to meet those expectations. Once you finish setting the expectation, the crowd is all warmed up. They're beginning to, to learn to talk with one another. They're not embarrassed by speaking out loud. They're sharing the ideas. You see the group just melting together and the synergy of your district beginning to build. And then the next question is so critical. Five years from now, if a former member called to inquire about your club, what would you like to tell them about changes for the better that have been made? And how have those changes been shared across the district? Let them work at the table. Let them get the, the best two or three ideas from each table and then let them report that out. The Scrivener is writing down every idea because every idea is important. And you're gonna be able to see that people are gonna get very creative during this time. At one of the Build a Vision meetings that I facilitated, Alliance says, why can't we have a district-wide virtual Leo club? And then we can have them come together in each zone to provide service. And then because some of our smaller communities don't have a high school, some of our smaller clubs don't have a high school within their service area, but they do have youth within the area. A great idea. Have we implemented it yet? I haven't seen it implemented, but the seed has been planted. And so all of this creative juices are beginning to flow. We know their expectations, we've gotten warmed up, and now we are beginning to develop a vision for a better tomorrow. But fear not, we're not going to stop there. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. Henry Ford said that originally, our international president, Brian Sheehan, says it daily. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. And so we've got to change the way we do things. And we are doing that. We have really transformed ourselves over the last 105 years. And we know that because in 1917, when our association was started, then Melvin Jones got off the train at every stop and formed a club. How many of you have got on a train and got off at a stop to form a club lately? You haven't. You see, change has already taken place in our association. And change will continue to take place in our association. And so we have to embrace change as leaders. And when we embrace that change, along with the vision of our visionaries, we're gonna see our districts begin to do those things which are so important. That's to add clubs to expand our footprint of service into new communities. All clubs to add members so that we have more hands to serve and all members given an opportunity to lead in new and creative ways. And now we are gonna insert our five-year averages right here. And we're gonna ask the questions, are we happy with where we are? And that doesn't even have to be a table question. That can be just a express yourself where you are. Are you happy? Can we do better? And we can, and we will do better. And what changes are needed to help us to be the best that we can be. And they're gonna to begin to tell us some of those changes and that's all right. You jot them down because we're going to build those into our plan because all these ideas are coming together. The excitement's building, the cooperation is building, the collaboration is building. We're about 35 to 40 minutes into our meeting, and all of a sudden, it's not 35 clubs represented, it's one district with 35 visionaries all coming together to help us to find a better tomorrow. And so then we're going to move into the uh, SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. The path to district improvement is to know who we are. We have to discover ourselves before we can go out and help anyone else. And so we're going to discuss our strengths and leverage them. We're going to manage our weaknesses. We're going to take advantage of our opportunities, and we're going to minimize the impact of our threats. And so as we move forward, we're going to begin some of the table discussion again. And recognizing the truth about ourselves is the starting point of all change. And so 
now, 50 minutes into the presentation, change is taking place right before your eyes. The excitement, the attitude, the outlook of our lions, our visionaries, they're coming together and some of them are already beginning to think. What do I need to be, do to be a zone chair? How can I move from being a zone chair to get in line to be the district governor? And all these things are so important as we begin to, to move forward. And so you're gonna ask them at their tables, list our strengths. Let them talk for three to five minutes and then let them share with you their top three or four ideas. And when you've got these, say 15, 20 ideas that come from each of the table, then as a facilitator, it's time to ask, if we could only work on three of these strengths and really highlight them in the next 12 months, which three do you think is most important to our district? Let your visionaries tell you which strengths are most important and where that you need to shine that spotlight because they will. And you note it on the, on the, the chart so that they know that they are having input in the entire vision building process. And then we're gonna to move to weaknesses. We're gonna repeat that process. These are our weaknesses. We've got them reported. We got 15 to 20 there. What three weaknesses, if we could correct them in the next 12 months, should we correct first? And the visionaries are gonna tell you because what they're gonna tell you is the things that if they're changed, make the lives of lions easier. They make membership satisfaction go up. They enhance our ability to serve. They enhance our ability to lead. Listen to the visionaries and identify those three weaknesses that you're going to improve upon in the next 12 months. Not you as a district governor elect, but you collectively as your district, because no longer is it the district governor and his goal is becoming the vision of the district, is becoming the district goal and district governors and district governor elects are simply leaders, leaders who have added value to their district, leaders who have been given permission to lead, and leaders who are going to take and lead us through the process of developing a plan and finding greater success. I'm so excited because we're going to move to opportunities. What are some of our opportunities? And they're going to talk about we have a great opportunity if we could add value to the lives of Leos that they would want to become lions. We've got the, an opportunity to expand our service. We have an opportunity to move into these communities. You're gonna start naming those opportunities. And once again, you're gonna ask if we could just seize on one or two, three or four of these opportunities. How do we rank them? What's the number one and two opportunities that we really need to embrace and we need to seize in the next 12 months. And now we've got those, tell me number three and four, because we need to, to have our plan broad enough that we have room to reach our goals and to move beyond our goals. And then finally, we're gonna talk about our threats. And there's threats that out there that we don't even know are threats. As many districts completed their uh, build a vision in 2020, most of them, if not all of them, had no idea that COVID would be coming and that we would move from an association that met in phase to a virtual association for nearly two years. And then we'd have the, the threat of getting Lions back to meetings, back to serving in 2022. And so talk about those threats and then evaluate, prioritize those threats What's the biggest threat we have that we really need to watch out for? What's the second and third uh, threats that we have that must be worked out, looked out for? And as we continue this process, it's so important that all these ideas are being recorded, all these ideas are being taped up on the wall, that everyone feels if it's, that it's important. If you've not taken a break, it's probably time for you to take a break just to stretch, make sure everybody has an opportunity uh, to use the restroom, to get a light snack, but what's happening now, and you can see it, is there's conversation because one lion is going over to the other lion and said, and saying, you said such and such a few minutes ago, and I didn't quite understand that. Explain to me what you meant. And that dialogue, that wayside learning 
is creating those bonds of friendship and building a relationship that is strengthening your district before your own eyes. Because when we have 35 to 40 lions all stepping off in the same direction in your district, we are going to see mighty things happen in the coming year. I can't change the direction of the wind, but I can adjust my sails to always reach my destination. <clears throat> and so it's time for us to begin to talk about that destination. Where are we going? What is our goal? And that your facilitator is talking about goal. They're gonna talk about each of the four focus areas, new clubs, new members, membership satisfaction, leader support. They're gonna talk about smart goals. And they're gonna talk about accountability how that we're going to hold one another accountable, how that not only are we going to promise we're going to do something, but we're going to deliver on our promises. This is an exciting time. And as we move into building those goals, focus area one, and you're going to have let every table have about eight to 10 minutes to discuss why are new clubs valuable? Because most of your lions who are visionaries are in there have not served as a district governor, and they may not have even thought why a new club might be valuable but we're letting them discover for themselves why clubs are valuable and we're letting them share it. Where can we start new clubs? Where do we have a relationship to start a new club? New clubs are easy to start where that one or more lion leaders have a relationship in that community so that you can go and talk with those people that you have a relationship with, sell them on the concept of what a lion's club can do for their community, for their uh, interest for their specialty group. And we're going to talk about what are specialty clubs and uh, what specialty clubs would be most successful in your district because every district's different. As a matter of fact, every zone is district different. One zone might really need an ethnic specialty club, Nepalese, uh, Indian, Japanese, where other districts don't have those communities and those common interests and ethnicities, and that wouldn't be good for them. Another one may need simply to have a specialty club that focuses on at-risk children, or they may need a specialty club that focuses on the needs of the library. Whatever it is, let's talk about it, because your visionaries have the relationships and they have the creativity to create these specialty clubs. And then what training and resources are needed to help us to be able to form clubs in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. And they're going to tell you, as a matter of fact, one of the first meetings I facilitated, as people began to re report out, we had uh, why clubs are valuable, why new clubs are valuable. We had about six or eight uh, areas where they thought clubs should be formed. We asked them to, to prioritize those. They did, and that helped us with our planning. And they had several specialty club ideas. And then the question was, what training or resources are needed? And one lion who hadn't spoken very much in the back of the room raised his hand. He says, I'd like to help you start new clubs, but I don't know how. I don't know anything about the process. I just don't know how. I know how to serve. I know how to roll up my sleeves and get things done in my community. Can somebody show me how? And from that, part of our action plan in area four was to develop a Zoom, a webinar, and invite everyone who wanted to help to be on the new club team to understand this 10 step process of forming a club, to practice what their elevator speeches are as they canvas in business communities. And it was so beneficial because it was some of those individuals then that helped us to form the next two or three clubs that was on the list because they had the relationships and the knowledge to help us to get there. And then you remember we had those five-year goal uh, trends and we looked at the five-year trends and it says that we've averaged forming 1.2 clubs a year for the last five years. And so if you go back to your visionaries, by the end of this fiscal year, our district will charter how many new clubs? Well, somebody's so excited, they say, oh, we can do six. There's six names, uh, cities up there. We can do six. Somebody else says, oh, we've only done 1.2. Why don't we set a goal of one? And we let the visionaries discuss and debate. The facilitator asks some questions, keeps the discussion moving. 
as they go from, well, I understand why six is a little lofty, but one's a little short. Can we do four? And then they begin to talk about four and somebody says, well, what do you think about two? Because we've averaged 1.2. What do you think about two? Well, we're at four and we're two. We're four and we're two. And somebody says, let's split the difference. Let's do three. And somebody else says, let's set a goal of two. And then we'll have a stretch goal of three because I want us to meet our goal. And then I want us to stretch just a little bit. Oh, we can all live with that. And your facilitator says, is it, is it the consensus of the group that we'll set a goal of two and that'll be our district goal with the understanding that as soon as we get that second one formed, we're gonna have a stretch goal of three. Yes, we can do that. Focus area one is done and all the information that you need to build a plan has now been gathered. It's been written on the, the butcher paper. It's been taped to the wall because you're going to focus area two, revitalizing clubs with new members. Why invite people to join your club? Let them talk about why people need to join their club because they're gonna discover that maybe their club isn't as inviting as it should be. What's the best way for a club to add new members? And everyone's gonna talk about, just ask. One, one uh, discussion, inviting them to service project, uh, going back and finding the lions who have left our association the last five years, inviting them back. Starting a legacy program so that one of our, when one of our members die, we invite their children or their grandchildren to join our clubs to continue that legacy in their family. There's so many different ways and they'll be discussed and we're writing all those great ideas down. How often does your club host a membership growth event? How is it done? How often is it done? And all of those questions are going to be answered, but there's also gonna be some lines in the crowd that says, what's a membership growth event? And it gives us an opportunity to direct them to the membership growth event toolbox, which is a six week planning guide at lionsclubs.org, which will help every club to plan an event geared toward bringing new members in. And when the formula that is at lionsclubs.org, the membership growth event toolbox is followed, clubs find that they add anywhere from three to six new members. If they do it twice a year, they would be adding six to 12 new members every time that it's done. That's a discussion for another day though, because we've got a lot of vision still to create. What training or assistance is needed? And we're gonna talk about how many members we've added. We've added 200 uh, members and it's the average. And somebody says, oh, I think we can do better than that because we've been losing 52 members uh, a year. And so we're gonna have to increase it to about 250, maybe more than that. And the crowd is going to begin to discuss. Ultimately, if we as a constitution area could increase the number of members that we bring in by 5% and decrease the number of members we lose by 5%, we would have positive membership uh, at the end of every fiscal year. And so knowing that we're listening, and we don't want to set a goal that is so outrageous that we can't meet it. But at the same time, we don't want to set one that's so low that we just walk over it. And so if we've been adding 200, to have a 5% growth would be 210. A 10% growth would be 220. Somewhere in that range is probably reasonable because the facilitator here has to also manage some expectations and set the group up for success. Because if we're successful in year one, when we implemented the global membership approach, we are going to have so much momentum going into year two that we're going to be more successful. And by year three, we are going to explode with service, membership, and leadership. We're moving on to focus area three, and we're giving every time table time to discuss. We're reporting it out. We're still writing it down. How do you know a lion is engaged? What is new member, why is new member orientation important? How do service projects help retain members? How can we re-engage members who have stopped participating in club activities? The ideas, the solutions are found with your visionaries. As a district governor team, you do not have to be the person or the group that has every idea. You simply have to be 
the group that facilitates communication and makes an environment that is safe for everyone to share their ideas. Because when that happens, we are beginning to involve others. They're becoming engaged. And some of these opportunities, such as losing members, some of these opportunities, such as inviting new members, will take care of themselves because those who've engaged and put themselves out there have really been the ones that uh, will come up with these ideas. And then you let them set the goal for the maximum number of drops you'll have. We've been having 250 drops. We've averaged minus 50. And so they debate back and forth. And if you let them have 10% growth on your members, let them have 10% on your drops. So we're 250 to 225. Yes, there's still a gap there. Uh, we're at, if we were at 200, you're at 220 and you're at 25 and you're still projecting a minus five. But I got news for you. Come May 1st, if all you've got is a minus five, your troops, your clubs, your zone chairs, your members will rally because they're so close to finding greater success that everyone will get out and, and, and invite more members. Set, make your goals realistic so that we get, we reach them and we exceed them and that we encourage and excite our members. And then we're moved to area four. What programs, seminars, or training should be offered to club officers? What's the best format to deliver that training? How is this, if the district hosted a Lions Leadership Institute, who should attend? What about other types of support? Can, what other types of support can we provide to our leaders? And they're gonna have ideas because all day long, all we've done is triggered ideas. And someone goes back and says, we mentioned that virtual Leo club, how would that work? Can we have a group that would put together some training and share that with us? And someone says, well, we talked about the membership growth event toolbox. You think we can get a webinar that explains that to us? And someone else says, oh, but we also talked about trying to develop a program to uh, provide, continue the legacy of lions who've passed away. And do we need some people to work on that? And, and then maybe a webinar to present that. And all of a sudden, they're beginning to, to identify the things that need to be developed and trained upon in your district. And a lot of the training is available already at lionsclubsinternational.org at the Learn Center or any of the other resource pages on our website. And so a lot of times, all we have to do is take the information that's already there, package it in the form of a webinar, share it, teach it, give an opportunity for participants to ask questions. And all of a sudden, we've excited them and we've empowered them to serve like they've never served before. In order to carry a positive action, we must develop here a positive vision. And we are developing that positive vision and so collaboration is the key. The global membership approach brings everyone in your district together. Now, it's time for you to take your three by five cards, give to every visionary and tell them, we need you to write down your name, your address, your email address, and your phone number. But don't stop there. Everyone has a passion. And we need to align your passion with the purpose of our district in order for us to move forward. So everyone needs to write down at the bottom of their card, either my passion is new clubs, my passion is new members, my passion is new service, my passion is leadership support. Have them pass them in and you're gonna sort them out. And then those that put new clubs, those five or six lines that says, I'm excited about new clubs, I'd like to learn about new clubs, they are then empowered to write the plan for new clubs and utilize the information we've gathered in the last three hours. The same with new members. They're challenged to develop the plan of action to bring in 220 members into our association in the next year. And they've also got all the ideas and resources given to them that have been shared by everybody. And then we have new service. And the purpose of new service is to engage lions with their hands and get them excited about being a lion so we retain them. And they talk about new service. 
They talk about retaining our lands. They talk about new fellowship and new service. And finally, group four does leadership uh, development, leadership support. And you've got four groups working on four mini plans that will be discussed in the next video on how to do that. And then all four of them can come together for the master plan. And then you have district goals that have been bought into and formulated by 40 visionaries who are now ready to go back to their clubs and their zones and share what we've accomplished today. It's amazing. We're gonna communicate the SWAT results to clubs and districts. Someone in your district can type up everything that is on the walls now and organize it and email it out to every line across the district. Now, will some of them delete it? Probably so, but it doesn't matter. We've tried to engage them. Send it to your council chair and your global action team and on your multiple district level. Do they have a veto power? No, but it's, you know, it's so important to keep them involved because you're gonna need the council chair. You're gonna need the global action team at the multiple district level to support your plan and help you to find greater success. You're gonna go online to the Learn Center and you're going to complete that course action planning to achieve district goals and succession planning. You're gonna write that action plan for each of the goals established and you're gonna mobilize for the plan implementation and goal achievement. Those last two is build a plan, another video for you to watch, and then build success. That's another video for you to watch. But when you complete all four of these videos, you're going to be so excited that you are going to be ready to lead your district in a mighty way. Thank you for joining me today. And thank you for what you're going to do for your district and your communities. Because together, we're expanding the footprint of service. Together, we're engaging more volunteer members. We're retaining our members with exciting service and we're giving leadership opportunities to each and every lion so that they can lead at the level of their comfort. Once again, thank you. And thank you for what you're going to do. Call on your global action team because together we can and together we will.